Hey guys, welcome back to Doctor of the Future. This is Dr. Collins and Parker. And on this episode, we're going to be talking about planning your garden. Not so glamorous, but very important if you want to be successful. So stay tuned. All right, so why even plan out your garden? Why take the time to sit down? It's not glamorous. It's not necessarily fun. It's mentally taxing so that you can have success in what you plan. You need to know what you eat. You need to make sure you are taking a look at the irrigation. What grows well in the zone that you're in? What time of year based on that zone should you be planting? And have an idea of what grows well together and what should not be together if you wanna have the most success in terms of um, not having bugs on your plants, but also the most productivity in your garden. Plant what you actually eat. Don't plant that exotic thing that you've never even tried at the store. Know what you guys eat. Know how much square footage you have to plant and plant accordingly. If you eat a lot of broccoli, you should plant a lot of broccoli. If you maybe every now and then put onions in your dishes, don't plant onions, at least not a lot of them, right? So think about what you guys eat and proportionately plant that in the garden space that you have available. So that's a great segue for square foot gardening, right? If you know what you eat and you know how much actual square footage you have, a great way to plan this out is the technique called square foot gardening and it's what I'm doing in my raised beds. So you can break up in your four by four bed, actual square uh, foot segments and each type of plant that you plant will occupy different percentages of those squares. So I know that sounds complicated, but for instance, like a head of broccoli, by the time it's done growing, that you should have one head of broccoli in that square foot, and maybe you can plant some things around the base of it. If you know how many squares you have and how much bed space you have, it gives you a, a rough estimate that's nice for how much broccoli or onions or melons or whatever you're gonna ultimately have. With square foot gardening, you want to pay close attention to irrigation because there's such a high density of plants with you planting out each little square foot space. So what I did in my garden is ran off of existing sprinkler lines, lines and ultimately a grid to make sure that each square in the middle of it will receive irrigation. It's something to consider if you want to not be a slave to irrigating in general and watering your plants and it's a huge mistake people make because they're really all in and watering their vegetables for the first couple weeks but really quickly life happens and you forget about them and if you are not watering those vegetables regularly especially with annuals they will die so or at least get diseased and then die um, so irrigation is huge in Florida, and especially in this area in Stewart, this is zone 10A is where we're at. It's important to plant uh, based on, and the University of Florida will break it down by three areas, uh, North, Central, and South Florida. But based on where you're at, you should be planting certain things at different times. And it's when is a huge mistake that people will make because all of a sudden they get the itch to start planting tomatoes or whatever and they will plant at the wrong time, which is a huge mistake and a big way to end up having plants that are diseased and ultimately not very successful and make you want to give up on gardening. September happens to be a really good time to start planting most annuals in Florida. We actually have two seasons. September is the beginning of one, and then around like January-ish, after that first frost, is your next batch. And it's nice because in Florida you have two seasons. The other mistake people will make is what to plant. So this is a huge piece of this whole thing. Plant annual vegetables that are actually successful. In Florida, believe it or not, this is a huge mistake people make. They plant tomatoes that do well in Connecticut or Vermont or whatever. Put in the ground, in this area, in your raised beds, plants that are successful in 10A. The way I did that is depending on Southern Seed Exchange. These guys have a whole, breakdown of seeds that will do well in our area. All this stuff you guys like, tomatoes, broccoli, cauliflower, whatever. But they are varieties that have been sort of weeded out for being successful in a hot, humid climate. 
Once you know what you want to plant, you need to know how they interact together. And the overarching philosophy to that is called companion planting. And what I've done in our raised beds is in each of our different squares, I've worked to lay out plants that will do well and not inhibit or interfere with the growth of other plants. So each one of our beds has specific relationships with plants to produce more and not interfere. To save you guys the hours of research that I did on what varieties will do well here, I'm going to quickly sort of parade these two and show you what we're planting so that you can go on Southeastern Seed Exchange and order them yourselves. So in the garden, the two things we eat the most of are cruciferous vegetables and bell peppers. These guys don't coexist well together. So the different bed designs that I've set up for companion planting center around cruciferous vegetables and peppers, and I'll show you what I mean. These are the cruciferous vegetables we are growing. Green Goliath broccoli, Catskill Long Island Improved Brussels sprouts, and Snowball Self-Blanching Cauliflower. In those beds, as companion plants, we're going to have King Richard leeks, tall Utah celery, yellow parma onion, and also garlic. The other staple plant is bell peppers and jalapenos. I've chosen bullnose because it's an improved variety for South Florida and Charleston Bell. Their companions include carrots. I chose Scarlet and Nantes. These are so sweet, very, very good. Your staple is Detroit Dark Red. These are the most widely planted. And then Rosita Eggplant, which is actually a Puerto Rican variety. So let's talk vertical planting. Beyond what's going to be in the actual bed, we're going to vertically up trellis, grow cucumbers, pole beans, and different types of melons, and I'll show you what I picked here. For cucumbers, I am experimenting with two improved varieties that actually came out of Cornell. They have been developed for downy mildew resistance and actually performed really well in some testing that was done. The downy mildew resistant 264 cucumber and 401 cucumbers. Melons can be another hard plant to grow in South Florida due to uh, downy mildew and just insect pressure. These three varieties have also done very well in different testing uh, and trials. So the Seminole Melon, Adisto 47, and Tai Nang 2. These are all cantaloupe type melons. And also beyond going vertical, you can occupy the space that is in between raised beds by choosing vining plants like watermelon. So I am experimenting with a few different types of watermelon to see what we really like as we go forward. The three varieties are Crimson Sweet, which is your standard, like if you go to the grocery store and you get uh, watermelon, Blacktail Mountain, and Georgia Rattlesnake. Another tough one can be squash and pumpkins in Florida. South Anna Butternut is actually a recent uh, hybrid squash that is actually blended with Seminole pumpkins so that you can get a butternut squash. This is a new release that I'm excited to try out to actually get butternut squash. Chinese Tropical Pumpkins, which did very, very well uh, in downy mildew resistance and are supposed to be very, very sweet. And then your tried and true, if you live in Florida, you should be growing Seminole pumpkins. The Native Americans actually grew this variety. It was basically extinct um, as uh, Native Americans were being eradicated, but somehow this guy shined through and we have available still Seminole pumpkins. And lastly, this is the wild garden mix that I'm gonna grow in the tower garden for lettuce from Southern Exposure Seed Exchange. So you guys can check it out and get some for yourselves. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. I hope it was really informative with getting ready to plant your annual vegetables since it's September. If you guys have any questions, shoot me a comment or direct message. I'd love to help you out in any way I can. Order your seeds, start planning, and uh, get busy.